In the previous video, we explored various topics. We saw how Bohr derived an orbital's radius. We also saw how to find electron energies in different orbitals, and we saw how to find transition energies. But is the model of an atom that simple? Sadly, it's not. One reason is because of this topic we talked about called wave particle duality. According to this idea, we could see that things can have wave-like properties no matter how small. So we can say that an electron can have wave-like properties. And because of this, the path of an electron is not necessarily circular. And Bohr's equations actually made the assumption that they were circular. That's why using them to find radius is not necessarily that accurate. So now we can think of an electron as a singular particle, but it's moving on this wave path. You can imagine it's going to be hard to find its radius because the radius will be changing. So we can't know the exact position, but one solution to increasing the precision is actually exciting it with enough energy that its wavelength is so short, the radius has a lot less variation. The problem with this is that the more energy you give the electron, the greater the momentum change and the less precisely the momentum is known. Not only this, but the measuring instruments themselves will cause some disturbance to the electron, thus changing its momentum. So if you use a microscope, a photon must hit the electron and in doing so, the momentum change happens and you can see how you're not getting a reading of the momentum once it's changed. So I've created an analogy to help you understand what I've just been talking about. Imagine trying to measure the speed of a fish in a pond using a flashlight. If you shine the light directly on the fish, you can determine its position accurately, but the sudden brightness startles the fish, making it swim faster. On the other hand, if you use a dimmer light to avoid startling the fish, you won't disturb its speed, but now you're less certain of its exact position. And this trade-off basically mirrors what Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is about, where the more precisely you measure one aspect of a particle, like its position, the less precisely you know another aspect, like its momentum. And this relationship can be described mathematically as follows. So the more you know about the particle's position, or delta x, the less you know about its momentum, or delta p. And the inequality, or greater than or equal to sign, indicates that there is a fundamental limit to how precisely both the position and momentum of a particle can simultaneously be known, and this limit is h over 4 pi, where h is Planck's constant. And this is basically Heisenberg's uncertainty principle explained in a simple and quick way. I hope you found this helpful. If there was anything that was confusing, please feel free to leave a comment. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Until next time.